Hello, hello. Oh, I've got super special episode and special treat for you today. I am speaking to incredible business coach and a mindset coach, Sophia Rose Bernardi. And we're going to dive deep into all sorts of things, sales, marketing, what's working right now. So especially if you're a coach, expert, consultant, and maybe you're starting your business, maybe you're scaling your business. This is going to be super, super valuable. Uh, welcome, Sophia. So excited to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Amazing. So maybe whilst we start, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about what you do, how you help people and just a little bit about your journey. Amazing. So yeah, I'm a mindset and business coach, as you said, and I started my coaching business when I had just turned 22 years old. So on the younger side of things, and it really came off the back of me being so stuck and lost and confused for a lot of my teen years in regards to what am I going to do with my life? Like, you know, all of my friends in school knew what they wanted to do in university. Um, and I just had no idea until I found coaching. And I found coaching when I was on my own personal development journey. I was trying to find myself and my purpose. I was trying to overcome a breakup and I was just really stuck in my life. And on that journey of reading books, watching YouTube videos and things like that, I've eventually, you know, entered this personal development world where, you know, there's seminars and workshops and meetup groups and all of these things. And I just dove straight into it because I was just feeling, you know, so stuck within myself. I, I couldn't move through these heavy emotions in regards to the breakup I was going through and things like that. And I one day went to this four day seminar. And I realized in that experience through overcoming all of my, you know, stuff there that a lot of the people that were there were coaches. And, you know, the, the man on the stage, Tony Robbins, he, you know, is a coach. And it just, it was this light bulb moment. It clicked me. I'm like, oh, this is a career path. Like I've been so stuck for so many years and I've come here for four days and learned some powerful tools. And it's all just been like, released and removed. There's got to be something powerful to that. I want to teach that to everyone. So anyone else that's stuck can have these tools and move forwards. Like that was kind of my mentality because it was just so transformative for me. So I decided to become a coach. I hired a coach the very next day to teach me how to start. And I, and I just dove into it. And Four years later, um, as you can imagine, obviously a global pandemic has been in between there and, and everything in between, but I've managed to grow my business to over a million dollars and I really love what I do. I love who I help and got a lot of freedom um, and I'm impacting people every day. And it's it's really just because I was working on myself and I took that leap and I, and I never gave up. That's amazing. I love it so much because you're right, especially kind of this you know, we have to choose our path, like starting university and especially thinking what are other peers are doing. They're probably getting like economics or finance degree or becoming lawyers. Exactly. Like traditional path. And you're probably asking, well, what am I here to do? So I just first want to congratulate you on your bravery to kind of like listen to that inner voice and tap into your calling kind of thing or feeling drawn to this world. And oh my goodness, starting with Tony Robbins, what an incredible start. Uh, yeah, I originally just found him on YouTube. I was w typing videos on YouTube, like how to be happy. And he, he came up and I had no idea who he was, but he, he said this quote on, on stage. He said, life is happening uh, for you and not to you. And it completely transformed my life because up until that point, I truly just felt like life was throwing so many curveballs with me. I, I haven't even got into the depths of, you know, the family struggles we went through of like my dad having a gambling addiction that broke my family and moving us moving overseas to be with my mom's side of the family when they split up and all of these things that that just caused so much conflict within me. And, you know, that video really helped me, which led me to buy his books, which then led me to attend his seminar, which now is helping me like to help other people today. And obviously I've had so many mentors on that journey, but he was that starting point for me. And yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. Beautiful. I love it so much. Wow, what an incredible journey. Um, absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, it's just incredible, isn't it? So to, let's talk, let's dive deeper. So you kind of uh, went into it and uh, what were the kind of mistakes maybe you've made? Maybe the mistakes you see other coaches make, especially maybe when they're starting out, when they're thinking about scaling. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think one of the 
you know, I don't have any regrets, but upon reflection, you know, one of the things definitely was I was trying to do everything and be everywhere in the beginning. You know, I was, you know, following so many different coaches and listening to so much advice because I didn't have that sort of confidence when it came to business. I had zero prior business experience and and everything like that. So I was listening to everyone and I was thinking like, I just need to do more and learn more and, and all of those things when actually especially in the beginning, but I really believe always, and I know this is something you teach as well, is like simplicity is key. You know, if you master one thing opposed to dabbling in in 10 things, you're going to go so much further with the one thing. And, you know, of course, there's a time and place for not putting all of your eggs in one basket and, and not having, you know, strong systems and foundations in place. However, in the beginning, it's really just about mastering the things that actually matter. So, you know, especially with an online coaching business, you don't, need to have business cards you don't even need to have a website there's a time and place for it where it's absolutely helpful but you don't need that on the beginning because if you don't have an audience a social media following to actually bring to that website your website's just going to have crickets on it you don't need to have three different offers and all of these things like you just got to master one target audience one you know strategy one offer you know one conversion process and all of these things like simplicity is key and I think it took me a really really long time to really get that message to sink in because I thought I was missing some magical secret when you know there wasn't a magical secret it's just about doing really well at the few things that actually matter yeah, so true. But I think you're right. Like that's such a big issue, especially right now in 2024 when we're recording this episode. We've pulled we've pulled in so many different directions. And I think especially people that may be starting out or indeed they're kind of just maybe feeling a little bit like, uh, you know, thinking, oh, those people must know more than me. And, you know, we are bombarded with so much information and especially oh. like online. And I think this is actually a big thing when people follow so many people, they kind of listen to them like they open their Instagram and then one day they get in this message thing oh I should be doing this or I'm missing out on this or oh, look at her she's doing so well or oh, look at how much money she's making and how is your day starting your day starting look at everyone else you feel already demotivated completely confused you start questioning your own strategy that you've been working and implementing you feel doubt you feel well actually my offer is no good and you haven't even launched your offer you're already doubting your offer because you just looked at someone online and exactly. actually i think one of the key ingredients to success in a way to as you rightly said, hire a coach, like make sure you're getting support in your business so you're not being lonely and by yourself so you can forget all the noise and kind of ignore it. You have to mute the external world. Otherwise, you're just going to be doubting yourself every day. Yeah. And and that's the thing is I just had this story of like, I'm missing something and it's because I wasn't really educated on how marketing works. Right. So I, and because I didn't have that trust in myself, I just trusted everyone else. And so I would go on Instagram and someone on Instagram would say reels is the way to grow your business. And then I'd be listening to a podcast and they would say, podcasting is the only thing you need. And then I'd go on Facebook and they say, all you need is a Facebook group to grow. And I'm like, oh my God, which one is it? It's so confusing. And, and the truth is, is that the only reason why they are preaching to the rooftops the thing they're doing is because they've mastered it, that they're actually focused just on that one thing opposed to like, they're not doing Facebook and this and this and this and this. They've picked one and they've made it work. And, and that's really why they're able to so confidently say this is the be all and end all. It's because that's their truth. And so if you choose a marketing strategy, you know, which is just a way to attract people, a way to nurture people and a way to convert people in a way that feels good for you based on where your target audience is, where you like spending time and, and all the things things, that's when it's going to work. It's through the commitment and the mastery of that opposed to the dabbling and, and, you know, coach hopping as well. You know, I've stayed with my coach for three plus years and I continue to do so because I just really believe that like now I do trust myself and I do have everything I need. And it's about getting better and better and better at that opposed to like, you know, I need to learn more and change directions and, and flip this on its head and do this and be there and all the things. So overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um, what you said is just really so powerful. And I think a lot of things is also focusing where your strengths are. You know, you got to enjoy the process. Um, you got to enjoy, you can't do something just for the sake of it. Like I find, 
you know, if you love connecting with people, if you love speaking, you love speaking on podcasts like we do, if you love speaking in front of people, if that kind of mm-hmm. lives like just sets you alive, which I know for so many of my clients just does, like they're alive, they're lit up when they're connecting with their clients, where they're mentoring or teaching their clients, when they're speaking in events, when they're speaking about, like that's like, it lights them up from the inside. And it's very difficult to compete with someone who's loving deeply what they do. And yeah. but for some people, it might not be that. It might be writing blogs. And maybe your thing is actually writing blogs and, you know, that's your thing. But it's just finding something that truly you can do. I always ask my clients this question. Like, if I gave you a billion dollars, what would you do with your time? Like, how would you spend it? What would you do with it? And answering that. Yeah. And answering this question kind of like in quiet moments and being like true. And, like Because then it's internally driven. Mm-hmm. And and I really love that question because it's really, you know, of course, maybe if you had a certain amount of money, it would naturally change maybe like the, the amount you do something or the dynamic. But I do really love that question because it makes you check with yourself. Like, are you in alignment? Like, are you even on the path that, that you want to be on? And it's really cool because the moment you said that, you know, what would I be doing? I would still be doing this. Sure. Like, sure. It would be presented slightly different, like different capacity and, and so forth like that but I would still be in the coaching industry, coaching people and helping people. And, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that that's my answer. Like, because money is amazing. It creates so much opportunity and freedom and impact and ability to give to people. And, you know, it, it's not everything like money without fulfillment, you know, is a recipe for disaster. And so I, it's so important that you really, really love what you do. And, and when you lean into that, the, the byproduct of that is money. So true. I'd love to dive deeper into the mindset bit. I know you work a lot around mindset with your clients. So what kind of issues do people come to you with or what kind of things that you have to help them work through? Yeah. So it obviously depends on the stage of business someone comes to me with, but to be honest, when you, when you break people's fears down it usually comes down to the same things which is like fear of like you know not being good enough and therefore that we're not going to be loved or you know there's there's so much fear around being successful or failing you know there, there's lots of fears that, that come up but the the main things that I see being important components to mastering your mindset no matter where you're at in your journey is first of all having clarity when people don't have clarity on on where they are, where they want to be, how they're getting there, what they're doing, you know, a lot of lack of confidence can come from lacking that clarity. It's normal to go through waves where you're lacking clarity. I think we all go through, I'm sure you go through it, I go through it. And, and that doesn't have to be a bad thing. It actually can be just, it can actually symbolize that you're growing. You know, when we when we grow into a new level of our business, of course, there's going to be things we're lacking clarity on because we're, we're still integrating our way there if that makes sense so sometimes lack of clarity can mean that you're moving you're growing you're you're moving forwards which is great but if we we stay in this lack of clarity of like I don't know who my target audience is I don't know my strategy I don't know what to do I don't know how to sell I don't know the pricing you know this lack of clarity creates this inaction and and that's never supportive when it comes to generating results so that's one big piece to mindset is clarity the second is therefore confidence right you know mindset is is at its strongest when we have tools and and support and resources to have confidence in ourselves and i really believe that us as babies we're all born with confidence like you, you remember what it's like with your with your children like when they were little bubbers they're so confident they have no fear they don't care if they laugh or cry or fart or whatever they do they're just so unapologetically themselves and unfortunately through time we we lose that from comparison and societal conditioning and you know difficult experiences we faced in life, you know, causes that confidence to go away. So to bring it back, my personal belief is, you know, through forgiveness, like forgiveness towards yourself and others, through releasing emotions and releasing beliefs that don't serve us, naturally by removing the things that we, you know, held on to as we grew older, it just allows us to go back to that confident self. And when we're confident, you know, when you feel good, when you look good, when, you know, internally you just feel amazing, how confident are you in terms of expressing yourself, showing up, showing up as a leader, presenting yourself, you know, it's a much better feeling than when you're in so much self-doubt and and fear of judgment. You know, you can tell by just looking at someone you've never spoken to. Like I could tell 
from a photo of you or a, a 30 second reel of you that you are confident and, and you are a leader in your space. And, and that's what drew me to you. And, and here we are now connecting and building a relationship together, right? And it's because you are, you know, easy to approach because of your confidence, right? And, and you can equally tell someone when you're walking down the street, if they're not having a good day or really lacking confidence, right? And so it says a lot. So yeah, clarity is one piece, confidence is another. And then the third piece to mastering your mindset is consistency, right? We are going to build confidence. We're going to build clarity through being consistent, meaning doing things more often than not, meaning, you know, what we say we're going to do, we we follow through on, you know, that this, the lack of self-trust comes from us saying, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. And then we don't go to the gym tomorrow, you know, the, the confidence, the consistency, and therefore the results will come from, you know, following through on the things you say you're going to do. And, and this doesn't mean you have to do things constantly. It's just picking an amount and sticking to it and, you know, owning the decisions you make, knowing that if we don't take action, we're of course not going to get results. So they're the three pillars I really play with when it comes to, to mindset and through supporting my clients, asking questions and diving deeper, we're able to get to the root causes of those things. But I find when they're feeling clear, when they're feeling confident and they are consistent in all of that and what they're doing, they generate consistent, amazing results in their life and in their business. It's beautiful. I love it so much. Um, there's actually a quote that I love is that says confidence is promises you keep for yourself to yourself. There you go. Yeah. This and it's so true, on. isn't it? It's like you, if you decide, like as your example, you said, like, if you decide I'm going to go to the gym every day and then you don't. That's, this is that's the part that feels shit. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, you feel, you kind of like feel really disappointed with yourself. Yeah. Whereas like I could go to the gym and barely do anything there or not be my best workout, but I'm still going to feel so, so much better, you know, than if I hadn't gone at all simply because, you know, I did it. I didn't feel like it and I still went. It was raining outside and I still went. Whatever it is, it's like you, you just do it. You know, you find a way and you know, the thing is, is that of course we all have different priorities in life in terms of some of us have children, some of us don't, some of us have, have more demanding jobs than others and so forth. However, we all have 24 hours in a day and there's no amount of money or success that can get you more hours in a day. Sure, you can delegate things and and so and automate things and so forth. But outside of that, you, you can't get more time in a day. So it comes down to what are your priorities? What do you value? Your bank account will show you that. Your calendar will show you that. And it's about finding time for the things that matter most to us because you know I've seen the most extreme examples where someone has three jobs a business and three children and and they still go to the gym they still go for a walk they they still succeed in their business and and all of these things and and the answer is not to just do more and be super chaotically busy but my point is is that you know there's so much evidence out there and you're one of those people of like when you decide something and you go after it and it's a priority and your actions are in alignment with that you can create some real magic in your life absolutely absolutely and sometimes it doesn't take a long time you know I say to my clients a lot of times like one or two hours where you completely dedicate completely focused and undistracted magic can happen oh, I, so much right? you can get so much done but people think that they're working on their business when often what they're doing in that two hours is thinking about what should I be doing like in like do you know how much brain capacity fear and doubt and judgment and lack of clarity actually causes like it's so much whereas when you're in alignment two hours flies by because you're in flow but you can get so much done like I wrote like two weeks worth of content in two hours you know yesterday because I was in that flow state oh, oh I know who I'm talking to I know the outcome I've got a process in place and therefore it's easy to do and obviously practice equals progress as well but you know so many people are thinking about their business but if you're not taking action it's it's not the same yeah and i think this is where the power of business coaching and business coach and business mentorship really comes in i know a lot of people listening i know a lot of people and i certainly was that was me at the start of my journey where i was like I don't need anyone's help. Uh, I, you know, I also, I think a lot of people think it's weird that coaches have coaches. Like, it's like, feels really confusing. They think, well, uh, if you're a coach, why do you need to have a coach? 
and they think, well, I can figure it. And there's also a sense of pride that people feel like, I can figure it out by myself. I don't need anyone's help. I'm smart enough. Everything is available for free online on YouTube. Um, and I think, you know, I'd love you kind of to talk more about this uh, and why mm -hmm. kind of you believe in that. But I think this, what you've just highlighted is what I've seen. People actually waste so much time. They were crazy hours. But the reason why they were crazy hours is two things. First of all, they're not clear on their path. They're uncertain of their path because they don't have support. So they are, one day they're doing podcasts, another one they're doing Facebook. They're doing everything too much. They're also deliberating. They're standing on the crossroad and think, should I go right, should I go left? They're actually procrastinating, overanalyzing and deliberating for hours, worrying about how to do it. I'm not sure how. I don't know what to do. Should Which tech tool I should use? Should I mm. use this strategy? Or what if it doesn't work? So you, the mental capacity you've just overworked your brain for eight hours but actually if you look mm. at the actual work you did you've probably written you know one email yeah I don't think people realize how much time gets chewed up in trying to make decisions and you know you sort of answered it yourself there it's like that's exactly why you should have a coach so that all that time you're trying to figure it out instead you know you are investing in someone who's already figured it out and can just tell you the answer so it's like if I get stuck on on something in my business maybe like let's just say you know um what type of post should I create or something? That's obviously a low quality question, but as an example, I could sit there and do all this market research and be searching around, comparing to other people's posts or sitting there thinking and twiddling my thumbs, or I can go to my coach who knows me, knows my goals, knows my target audience, has the marketing and content skills, and she can give me a suggestion in the right direction. And so it's like every time you have a question or you're stuck, you can go to someone who's been there, done that, or you can try and figure it out yourself. And you sort of said it yourself in the sense that, you know, you can be, you have to research and Google and watch things. And even still, when you make the decision, you don't actually have a hundred percent certainty that that's the right decision because you've got no one guiding you. And so I've tr I tried to, you know, I had moments earlier in, in my business where I tried to figure things out on my own, but honestly, when I really just believe success leaves clues. And when you look at what successful people do, they all have a coach. Like one of my favorite quotes is not all athletes have a coach, but all Olympians do like the best of the best. Like it gives me goosebumps when I say it, cause it's just so true. Like the best of the best have a coach, have a mentor, you know, they're working on themselves. They're investing time and energy and money and resources into becoming the best. And so if you want to be the top of the top where you're making the money, you're impacting the lives, you're creating the freedom, model what the best of the best do. They, you know, they invest in, in having mentorship and, and, you know, ever since I heard that quote, that's just really supported me to, to always have a coach. Like if I want to be the best of the best, then I've got to behave accordingly if that makes sense and so I've always had a coach ever since and I've yeah like I said stayed with the same coach for several years and it's been the biggest game changer because it means I don't have to watch the free videos and the free tutorials and workshops and things like that I'm like staying in my own lane I know what to do I've got that clarity and strategy and now it's just about doubling down on that and that's where the results come yeah, I love it so much. I love it so much. And also, I think, you know, I think you can learn from different people. Like, I love, like, you you know, you might have totally. one, one business mentor, but actually in certain aspects, you want to learn from different people. Another thing is, if you think about it, someone has spent at least a thousand hours obsessing their area of expertise, something they're deeply passionate, something that they love to do. And you have choice. You're either going to do the same thing a thousand hours as they did and spend years for some years like uh, it took me 20 years to figure out the frameworks that I did do it and all the experience that I gained or you can tap into somebody's expertise and kind of get it condensed and short right 20 yeah. years yeah and that's exactly. a choice it's a choice right and that's really yeah. what you're paying money for yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I, I never went to university or college um, and yet my coach has a marketing degree. So I didn't have to do the marketing degree, but I've learned from someone who has and, and you know, saved myself the 100 plus thousand dollars and the four years of doing it and, and gone straight to 
at the end of the day, out of that degree, like here's what's actually important when it comes to marketing, you know, and, and that's what I'm investing in. And so, so many people see it as like, oh, it's such, it's such a big cost to have a coach. Not everyone has a coach. And it's like, yeah, but do you want to be like the average person in society? Because that's the result you'll get, but the above average, they have a coach. And, and so it's, you kind of got to, you know, look at it like that. And you just got to flip your perspective. Like, is it a cost or is it an investment? Like to me, that's they're two right. very different things. Like an investment, something where you get an ROI from it. And you certainly get an ROI when you learn from someone that already is where you want to be and not just financially, but also, you know, mindset wise, energetically and what their life looks like. Cause I've had lots of mentors. I've invested in lots of coaches. Like I said, in the beginning, when I just was not trusting, you know, what path. And I thought there was a secret. I invested in so many people and, you know, I've, I've learned so much about you know, what I do and don't want and, and in a mentor. And I realized, you know, there are some people that are making millions of dollars a year, but then, you know, they're not in a relationship. They don't have a family. They're working 60 plus hours a week. You know, they, you know, live by themselves. And I'm like, if that's not the life I want, you know, mm. then whilst they have all of the money, there's, you know, the, the process I'm going to be taught in that process it probably is going to get me in that direction. Whereas I kind of want to work with someone that has a family, you know, and has similar values to me because then I know if I follow their process, then I'm moving towards that direction and that, that lifestyle. And, and that's really what I look at. So for me, it's not just about the money or even the expertise. It's like, what is their lifestyle look like and their results and the consistency of it and how they feel and all of those sorts of things. So powerful. So powerful. Um, yeah, I think especially like when you get, you know, you have a lot of bro marketing and they're going to yeah. give you, they're making great results, but actually do you want to have a life that they want? Do you like them yeah. as people? Um, because I think that's such an important thing. And also just a lot of people, especially when they're starting out, they're also thinking, well, I'm not making, I'm going to invest when I'm making 20k per month. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to wait to invest. This is a big one. I'm going to wait till invest till I have more clients. I'm not ready yet. And yeah. it always fascinates me. I always think, well, in order to make 20 to 100k, yeah. like you have to invest first. And the good yeah. thing is, and like I equities or bonds or something else which can go you've got a lot of risk, it goes up in value and you can lose money. When you invest in yourself, like the skills, the capability, the knowledge stays with you for life. Like no one can take that away. It's like ingrained. You can use it for this business, for next business, you can use it for everything you do. Yeah, and honestly, like out of all of the objections that I've heard in my time of being in business, that one is always the one that I, I just can't help but like have a little laugh at it because I'm like, you know, like how's that going for you? How's that approach going of like, you know, you utilizing the things you 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 have right now? Like if you really had like what you needed to grow, you'd already have the result. And so um, you've really got to invest to to learn something different, to get a different result. Like my personal belief is that nothing changes if nothing changes. And so, you know, that mentality of like, I'm just going to like magically wait for all of these transformations to have in my life and wait till I feel really good and everything's perfect. Then I'm going to invest in you. It doesn't work like that. Do you know what I mean? It works completely the other way around. And, you know, some you know, obviously everyone's got a different story and journey, but I've heard the most, you know, incredible stories of people that honestly had nothing, have taken out loans, were living in a van, you know, had to work four jobs or whatever it may be to be able to invest in mentorship because they knew that it doesn't work that way. They they have to invest to, to have the support to grow really fast. And because they backed themselves, they trusted themselves and it was a priority enough, they found a way, you know, they found a way to make that investment in themselves and, and now they reap the rewards because of it. So I really believe that's like the difference between a short-term mindset and a long-term mindset. So true. And the funny thing is people are happy to take on debt to buy a car that's going to decrease in value right away. right away as you even pull it up to your house. But they feel comfortable about that. People who feel comfortable, you know, getting into debt for university fees actually not going to help them with their passion. And it's yeah, the amount of people 
The amount of people that have university degrees, like they'll have one to three different degrees and they don't use any of them actually blows my mind. And, you know, it's so true. Like people will buy a car, like, so they'll say they can't afford investing in themselves, but then they have a car loan and, and the car literally depreciates in value. Like you said, the second you buy it, it's literally worth like three quarters the amount or whatever, half the amount. And it's just crazy. Whereas like your brain, like investing in your, in your mind and your knowledge is something that you have for life. It can't be taken away. It can't be depreciated. It just continues to get better and better. And that's why that's where I put my money. But again, like even you sharing that example, all that showcases is that, you know, where someone's priorities is at. Like, and and neither is like right or wrong. Like you can do whatever you want. It's your life. It's your rules, but you've got to look at what people say versus what people do. You know, if, if you really want something, I really just believe you'll find a way. So someone that really, really, really wanted to grow their business wouldn't be saying, I'm just going to wait until, you know, I've made the money. Like they'd be like, no, I'm going to find a way to invest because like, this is how badly I want it, you know? And, And that doesn't, have to be done from a scarce place but you know they will find a way like they're the people that say like I actually really want to do this but the investment's a bit of a stretch do you have something else is there a more extended payment plan do you have any suggestions that other clients of yours have taken to be able to invest you know there'll be they will ask like ask and you shall receive whereas those that shut off like some people before you've even shared their offer already have said like oh, I can't afford it it's like you don't even know what the price is. What what if it's free? What if it's $5? You don't know because you didn't ask. You just immediately shut yourself off from opportunity. And unfortunately, the people that, you know, they say they, they can't, you know, they won't, they don't, all of those sorts of things. They're just shutting themselves off from so much opportunity. And obviously this can be really hard for some people to hear because I'm sure we're all guilty of this at points, but I hope that you see it as an opportunity to reflect on like, where am I shutting myself off from opportunity in the world by limiting myself and telling myself that I'm not ready. I can't do this and all of the things because, you know, we, we've all been there, but when you reframe things, you create a whole new world of possibility. Like for example, I said, I started my coaching business when I was 22 you know, a big fear that I had in the beginning was who was going to pay a 22 year old life coach to tell them life advice was kind of my fear. And I think that's pretty valid for many reasons. Um, But of course I had a lot of, you know, experience in terms of the circumstances, you know, me and my family went through and and so forth, plus what I had invested to learn in and, and everything. But that was definitely a big fear. And I was very close to be like being like, oh, I'm just going to, stay in my casual jobs for a few more years. So I, I'm a little bit older and then people work with me, but I'm so glad that I wanted this badly enough that even though it was scary, uncomfortable, and I, I had that fear and I thought maybe other people would have that fear. I just did it anyway. And do you know what? Today, it's like my biggest compliment I get. It's like, I can't believe how young you are. I can't believe you started when you're 22. I can't believe this and that. And now that I know the work that is required to grow a business, I'm so glad I started when I did. And I didn't delay it because, you know, today is always the best day to to do something. So yeah, it's so funny that what was once my biggest fear is now my greatest strength. And, you know, on the flip side of that, there are some people that feel like they're too old, but it's like, you know, we're all going to have these fears and it's just about, you know, is what you want on the other side bigger than, than your fears? And if so, yeah, then you'll be that's right. Forward. And allowing it to be bigger. I still remember first time I invested a really big amount. It was really expensive mastermind. And it was so, and I remember like typing my credit card, my hands were shaking, like the amount of fear, my body was like in shock, but there's so deeply, I knew I so wanted it. And I remember, like, I wouldn't tell anyone, didn't tell my husband, didn't tell any of my family, because they would think I am, like, crazy, (laughs) lunatic. But you know what? It was so scary, and it was, but it was so terrifying, but it was the best decision in my life. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why it was so transformative, it was the best decision in my life, and really changed the trajectory of my life. Part of that, and was the fact that there was so much deeper commitment in me, like, I actually, Mm -hmm. I allowed that investment. I allowed myself, I allowed myself to be so valuable and to invest in myself. And what that did is I then guess what kind of results and level of commitment I had in the program. 
you know, the amount of, this is why I say, you know, high ticket, you need to pay as much as possible. You actually need to invest big, especially at the start. And yes, it's going to be scary. Your hands are going to be shaken. But what's going to happen is you're going to be so committed to make the money back. You're going to be so committed to make the return. You're going to go all in big. You're going to be a force of nature. Versus if you take something free, you're like, well, you know, I might not, you know, I don't have to implement it. Your level of commitment is going to be humongously different. So a fact, mm -hmm. if you're not paying, you make giving yourself a disservice. So the higher the price you pay is actually the bigger results you're going to get, uh, partly from that level of determination and force that's going to come through for it. Um, I agree. I fully agree. And, you know, kind of like you were saying before about the 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 coaches that say, oh, but I can learn it all for free. To be honest, you can. You can find a lot of answers for free. There are blog posts, there are YouTube videos, there are books, there are articles, there are free trainings and workshops and seminars. There's You can learn everything for free. But just like you said, Elena, like, but your commitment levels to it, you know, and the speed of growth is going to be different. One's like walking and the other one's like flying a jet plane, you know, and it's like you can go at snail's pace or you can you can get there like a lot quicker and more sustainably because you're just going straight to what works. So it's like, yes, you, you can find all for free, but the commitment levels is going to be so, so, so different. And I 100% agree, like the bigger the investments I've made in myself, the more I've shown up and the better, therefore, my results have been. Amazing. I love it. So thank you so much, Sophia. This was so powerful. I just love your energy. I love what you're doing. You're really a force of nature. Like you are incredible. I just want to congratulate you on your incredible business and your incredible journey. And I know there's even bigger things are coming. You're really just at the start of the most incredible journey to come. So huge congratulations. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. And tell people a bit more if they want to dive deeper into your world, where can they go? Uh, and what would be their next uh, best step to take with you? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, and for everyone listening, you must really love podcasts. So I definitely recommend my podcast then, Rising Coaches with Sophia Bernardi. Um, yeah, I drop episodes every single week that are supporting you to start, grow and or scale your coaching business sustainably through simple strategies and online events. Um, but otherwise, you can come say to me, say hi to me on Instagram at Sophia Rose Bernardi. And yeah, that's my name on all social media platforms. So, yeah. Amazing. And we'll leave all the details in the show notes so you can check it out. Thank you so much, Sophia. That was wonderful. Thank you.